atmosphere here in Galt today is very, very tense. It's the same as a group of people in a clinic waiting for a doctor to come out and tell you if you've got cancer or not. I'm one of the original families of this community. My parents were all buried up there, and my ancestors. But I'm not leaving. It takes the last bit of my body. As far as I'm concerned, Vic Young is playing with our lives like a puppet on a string, and I mean, it's very, very upsetting. I mean, he's playing with our lives. He don't realize that. He's driving everybody crazy. The crowd we got in right now, they're, all they see is dollar signs. They're all big business people, and they couldn't care less about small communities. Galtus, January 5th. Black Thursday, the day this community has been dreading. For weeks, FPI has been threatening plant closures, and Chairman Vic Young's announcement is expected this afternoon. Galtus is rumored to be on the hit list, and nowhere in this province would the loss of a plant be so devastating. Just over 600 people live here in this isolated South Coast community, and practically every man and woman over the age of 16 relies on the FPI plant for their livelihood. If the plant goes, they know their town is finished too. And so is a way of life they've clung to for nearly 200 years. The people here have been through this nightmare once before. That was in 1981, when after 30 years of continuous operation, the previous owners, the Lake Group, put the Galtus plant on the chopping block. That time they escaped death row, but what they thought was a full pardon under restructuring may now turn out to be just a temporary reprieve, a stay of execution. For the people here in Galtus, the past couple of months have been torturous. Constant rumors, speculation, worry and torment. They've all taken a terrible toll. And today, with word of their fate expected any minute, in fact already overdue, they're wound as tight as a drum. You get the feeling around here, they've just about reached the breaking point. Will you stay in shop wait for phone call or what? I'm here, yeah, still waiting. Mayor Roy yeah. Ingram's been plagued by calls all day. All hands want to know what's happening. But like everyone else in this town, the mayor's sweating it out, still waiting on Vic Young. No, I don't know. Everybody's just waiting. They don't know what they're going to hear. They don't know if it's going to be good news, bad news, or what. I'm expecting a call any time today. I've been here ever since 8.30 this morning. So every time the phone rings, you jump, sir. I guess you do. You don't know what you're going to hear. You don't know what to expect. And if the workers aren't calling the mayor, they're holed up outside his office in the freezing cold, trying to reassure one another, hoping for the best, bracing themselves for the worst, and venting their frustrations on anyone who'll take the time to listen. It's not our fault. We can't help. We can't help what that happened to, uh, to people up in Ottawa uh, if they are controlling the fish stocks and stuff. We can't help that. If the federal government mismanagement is not our fault, right? No, we put it on I mean, us. They had no say into it, right? Shouldn't and be. the same thing with mismanagement of uh, Fisher Palace. We had no say in touch. We just worked, worked, worked every day, 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, Roy, you're coming there now. I, I hope we get that. Got some good the workers. Roy, uh, we've been all gathered around there waiting. No, you got the word first. Or? No, I still haven't got no news yet. I was just talking to St. John's. And uh, Rick Smith, who's the mayor of Grand Bank, got a meeting scheduled with Vic Young at 4 o'clock. So I guess that we'll be here in summer around the same time or shortly after. Well, it's getting late now, and I hope we do. Uh, what do you think we're going to get out of it? Is good or bad or...? I don't know, but it don't look, you know, it don't look too promising for us. According to the news that, uh, what Grand Bank got a demonstration in there this morning, that, uh, Floyd Wells told him that if he could, he would keep the plant open in Grand Bank. But he said he couldn't, so he just about went out and told him that he'd close it down. Well, that's not much of a chance for us, I guess. So, uh, Grand Bank is gone, well, we don't got much of a chance, and we're going after the government to help us. That's true, yeah. But whenever I get the news, that I will be letting, letting the people know. Even the kids here seem to sense there's something wrong. The adults talk of little else except the fishery, and we all know the walls have ears. The kids may not fully appreciate what's going on, but they certainly understand what it would mean to have to pack up and leave their friends. He moved nowhere for a year. When I stay there, I have 16 weeks. They have flat clothes, and they might move Halifax somewhere with Aunt Vietnam. But they won't be able to get no jobs, so how are we going to make money? How are we going to live? 
late afternoon at the plant. Senior management are still on the job. They're under orders to say nothing to the media, but it doesn't matter anyway. They can't say what they don't know. These guys are every bit as frustrated as the rest of us. Supper time. The mayor is still at his office, still waiting for Vic Young. Mayor Ingram, uh, nearly six o'clock, still waiting. Yes, still there waiting, you know, and the longer I wait, the, the worse it gets, you know. Personally, I don't know what the company is doing there. I think the, after today, because the uh, first announcement was yesterday that it was going to be announced today. So now it's almost six o'clock and it's still, still not announced. And he's going to say he's going to make a public announcement tomorrow. But the communities would know before. Save our Save our they left Grand Bank at five this morning and they came looking for answers. <laughs> 6.30 at the local lounge. About 40 of the workers have gathered for the evening newscast. Maybe the news hounds know something they don't. That wouldn't be hard. These people haven't heard a thing, and they're getting more frustrated by the hour. The government, both levels of government, have an obligation to you, the workers, and to the province, and to the province as a whole, to see that doesn't happen. And you can be sure as shit's in a cat that we're going to fight like hell. We're going This community has been built for years. Men and women have worked hard to get our fish plant up to what it's supposed to be this last five years. We've been told to work hard, boys, and uh, you know, you'll better be better for it, right? And here we are this year now, realizing that the chance that, that we might never survive it, you know, be a revival again. Pretty disheartening, isn't it? It's, it's discouraging, sir, for a family man. I'm a family man of, uh, there's seven of us in the family, and we own our own home and everything else. And like you say, I mean, uh, I worked hard to get that. And for uh, someone to come in and tell you that uh, your plant is going down, what's good of my own? What's my, what's my family thinking about? You know, they say, Dad, I don't want to move. I don't want to go. No, and neither do anyone here want to go. Because this is where we belong, in this community. I can't see why Galtus, they're even considering closing Galtus. Because we are a red fish plant. We don't process enough cod to feed the population of St. John's breakfast. So why close Galtus if it's a red fish plant? And we've been told, I don't know if it's true or not, but it always this is the feedback we always get, that Galtus is producing the best fish. If we're producing the best fish, why close us down? Well, we all know that in one industry town, that if the industry goes, the town goes. So nobody wants to see that. And for the talk of resettlement, my old man over there is 85 years old. We've already settled once, and I don't want to hear talk about it anymore. You know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned, Vic Young is playing with our lives like a puppet on a string, and I mean, it's very, very upsetting to realize that here it is another day, and last night you, like, we were sat talking to each other and going to bed and figuring t this morning we was going to air that our plant was going to probably open for a few months or probably close, we don't know. And here it is this morning, you wake up, okay, it's another day. I mean, he's playing with our lives. They don't realize that. He's driving everybody crazy. Several hours later at the mayor's house. The strain here is beginning to show. Roy Ingram hasn't budged from that spot all night. He's been by the phone since he came home to supper, still playing the waiting game. Mayor Ingram, it's at midnight. You're still waiting? Yes, I'm still waiting. I've been, on, been by the phone all day. Come home after work. I'm still waiting for a call. Well, we talked to a lot of people earlier tonight, and they said their nerves are shot. Is that the way you feel at this point? Yeah, I do, yeah. I feel sort of uh, disappointed with them. That, you know, we haven't heard no news today. We were told we were going to hear, hear today. So right now, I don't know when we're going to hear. Probably. It's really frustrating. I don't know if the company have changed their mind about anything, or you know, any decisions have changed, or what, you know. We don't know what their decisions is, or what they're doing. Time for a break now. The mayor needs his rest, and so do we. We'll pick up our story first thing in the morning. <laughs> 8.30 Friday morning. 
a crowd begins to gather outside the general store. The mayor's inside. The waiting game is nearly over. Hello. Uh, is Mr. Ingram there, please? Speaking. Mr. Ingram, this is Mr. Victor Young's office calling. Uh, yes. One moment, please. What you're about to hear now is a condensed version of a conversation that went on for well over a half hour. Good morning, Roy. Yes, good morning, sir. How are you this morning? Oh, uh, a bit sleepy after a long week. I'm sorry to put you through all this agony, boy. Yes, I was, uh, I was up pretty well on eight. Yeah, well, I've been up for the last three or four nights, but your, your lack of sleep is the same as mine, and I don't have any good news for you this morning, sir. As of 8 o'clock last evening, uh, we struck a deal with the province where by today we would announce the closure of the plant in Galtus for May of 1991. Not 1990. May 1991. May of 1991. Okay. That we would, and the province will give us some assistance to do this. In 1990, we will operate Galtus for a minimum of 20 weeks. In uh, and in 1991, mm -hmm. we will operate Galtus for a minimum of 20 weeks. I see. Uh, and the plant would be closed. Of 1991. Uh, you know, I can't understand why Gauss. Gauss was uh, stressed as a redfish plant all along, and uh, there's, according to what I've learned, the redfish quota haven't changed, nothing. The only explanation for that, Roy, is we have three plants on the south coast, you know, which uh, all process either cod or reds or flats. And the, the bottom line for us is that we just don't need, given the amount of total fish that's available to our company, we do not need three plants on the south coast. My only answer to that is, I mean, someone had to, to make a judgment and a decision here. And those who are affected, I really can't expect them to understand why it's them, right? So, uh, so I think you only, well, you got to... You know that yourself. You don't want me to tell you. You got to fight on your hands yes, right now. You know, I, you've, you've said that. And the both beginning. levels of government. Yeah, you said that from the beginning. And, um, and uh, very patient in waiting. We don't expect. We don't expect uh, the federal government to uh, stop foreign oil fishing, according to what they see on the news. Uh, I don't see, uh, Roy. I do not see any evidence at all. No. That the foreign overfishing is going to end. But I am absolutely horrified that this time next year that I'll be calling up the mayor of X community and say, in addition to the three plants that we announced last year, your plant is on the list for this year. You know, yeah. that's, that is my biggest nightmare, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what we can do or what we can't do, but, you know, we're sure going to, to put up a, a fight to save our community. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, so, uh, I guess you'll be, you'll be hearing from us. Oh, absolutely. Well, very shortly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, Ron. Okay, man. Not my result, is it, boy? If that calls your camera to it. Boy, just got news from Vic Young. That gauntlet is going to close. He gave us, uh, he gave us 20 weeks in 1990 and 20 weeks in 91. Very good. That's not much of a quote, is it? Somewhere that was too no. tall. On a rock stranded. Plus, <clears throat> you know, like I told him, as uh, far as I'm concerned, it's uh, diff for the community. That's right. Well, that's what it is. That's what it is. Death sentence on the community. Yeah, I mean, right. what's left is the plant cause, right?
nutting. We nutting, got nutting, just nutting, just nutting, nutting air, yeah. Nutting just nutting air, it's right close. Our parade and everything is gone. All that we built up for years and years and years are down the drain just by this decision today. Yeah. That's so devastating, devastating. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for a telex to come in from, uh, from Vic Young now, and there will be a public meeting at 1 o'clock. But everybody, I'll be around for that. You got no worries about that, sir. Everybody be there. Yeah, well, that's right. I made it up to the school now to get the messages coming in on the faxes up there. So, uh, see you for that meeting, eh? Up, we'll see you up. News travels fast in a place like Galtus. Within a matter of minutes, the word is out, and small clusters of people are huddled together all over town. You can't say they're surprised, they're not. But this kind of thing is almost like the death of a cancer patient. Even though you're prepared for it, when it comes, you're still left in a state of shock. And no one here is more shocked than Mr. Harold Abbott. He helped build the plant here, and he's worked here ever since. I feel it's pretty dim, you know, pretty, it's pretty sad. I got four more years left, and I, and I've never made no big money. I got no money. I've never made none. I've never made $20,000 in my life. Leave that now, you know. And I haven't been real close to 20,000 either. Although I've been a foreman for 37 years. I worked with Lake Roots for 30, 32. And we was left with no pension, you know, or nothing like that. We never had a bit of pension. Now with, with the FPI, we have got a little bit of pension for the last couple of years. That's pretty small. But, and you, you, know, you must be crawling off for retirement, not 61 years old. 61 years old. So four years left? That's right. You know, I got a little trailer over there now. And I'm, only, I'm glad now I only got the trailer, right? Eh? Because I got no home to shuff out if I got to go, you know. So where does that leave you now, sir, with the plank? Well, thing? I wouldn't know because, you know, just like I said, I got daughters there, sons there, you know. Not too bad for me, but I, I hope they'll come up with something to give us something anyway to live out. A few local people are resigned to losing their plant, but most think they've still got a good chance to save it, that they can make a special case. Now, to the people of Galtus, it makes no sense to close this plant at all. This is what you call a specialty plant. They deal in redfish or ocean perch. They hardly ever touch a cod. The people here will tell you they hardly produce enough in the run of a year for a good feed of fish and brews. So why Galtus? Why us? That's the question they're asking here. And they can't understand for the life of them why FPI would shut down this brand new fiddling line when as an underutilized species, there's a lot more redfish out there than we're harvesting. Redfish is the stuff we give away to the foreigners because we don't even catch our own meager quotas. So again, the people here ask, why us? And it's a question they want addressed at today's public meeting. They know where FPI stands. There's no point in talking to them. But what they want to know now is how they can get government on side. And as they're about to hear from Mayor Roy Ingram, Redfish will be at the center of the town's strategy to stay afloat. Our plant was designated as a Redfish plant. They've stressed that to us a hundred times. I've heard it when I was there working in meetings. I heard it in meetings with Vic Young himself that God was a red fish plant. And as everybody know, that we don't have nothing to do with Northern Cod. The TAC that came down a couple of days ago, that was all about Northern Cod and other Cod quotas. So, I'm, well, I'm willing to fight it with the people of God right to the last breath within me. I'll talk, I'll talk to anybody. The mayor I'll tells the crowd he's forward. arranging a meeting with Premier yeah. Wells and that if all else fails, he'll try to have FPI's licensing Galtas revert to the town so that they can look for a new owner or possibly even operate the plant themselves as a workers' co-op. There's companies out there right now would gladly come in and operate this plant with a Ridgefish quarter and then boats. So I, li I like to get some comments on people from here know that what our strategy as council is going to fight this on. And it can't be fought by council, it's got to be fought by every individual in this community. And we want everybody behind you. If the mayor ever had any doubts that the whole town is behind him, they'll surely be dispelled here at this meeting. But I know today that, as for myself, I am very stunned, I am very urgent to hear that our community 
is going to die and that our government is willing to let it die. But as people of our community, we must fight and we must hear ourselves urge, not only sit and talk among each other, but let's don't be afraid of this microphone. Let's get up and stand up and speak till L we really feel. Till, till L we're really hurt. How our hearts have been torn apart today by the announcement of our God, this plant is not going to open. Let us fight to win because we're able to do it. Let's stand out and speak of the new homes that have been built. Four months of working on the plant, striving and trying to build that home without owing any bills. And now they're, they're taking it all away from us. Let's stand up and let's fight because we can win. I, uh, I happen to be one of the fellows that, uh, that just finished one of the new homes, and I don't think I'm ready to build another one. And I'm not planning on moving. I'm staying, and everybody else is staying. I'm one of the original families of this community. And my parents were all buried up there, and my ancestors. But I'm not leaving. It takes the last bit from my body. Thank you. So could I get some more comments from the people on how they feel on that? Yes, uh, oh, Mr. Fake Young is going to be listening to all this we're saying here today because I've been working on that plant ever since I was 14 years old. In this past five or six years, all you've been hearing, you do this, you do that, make your company pay. What did he give away? What appreciation have he showed? Nothing. We're down the drain. These fight has just begun because I come here and I grow up on welfare and I never want to see it again. And whatever it takes to make that place work over there, I'll do it. I'll back in anybody any time. I couldn't care less who operates it, as long as it's in operation. FPI don't mean one bag of beans to me. As far as I'm concerned, if uh, the government's going to bail out the major fish companies in 1983, right off millions, as far as I'm concerned, now it's their turn to come around and bail out the people and help the people that are going to be affected by these plant slow sounds. Thank you. It's going to take a lot of time to do it. He's given us uh, 16 months, I think it is, to operate it, to May 1991, it's 16 months from now. But not wait the 16 months, we'll start today. A steering committee is struck right after the public meeting, and within a few hours, they're all set to come to St. John's. So since our public meeting this evening, that we announced that we were going into St. John's, I've been talking back to the Premier. I've been talking back to Mr. Vic Young. The meetings are all set up on Tuesday with Mr. Young and the Premier. If we are willing to take it into our own hands, that maybe we can be more masters of our own fate uh, after we've uh, gone to government this time, you know? Right now, Gauls uh, is in for some hard times, but we're going to have to fight this thing. We, we've got to go down with a fight. If we don't, uh, if you are just going to walk over us. We've got donations from the Lions Club of Gauls, and the union is satisfied to foot their own bill paying their own money in. So it looks like now that we'll be leaving, leaving Gauls on Monday, heading for St. John's. The people of Galtus are operating under no illusions. They know their town is in real trouble, that she could very well go under. But if she does go, it'll be with a roar, not a whimper. The waiting game is over. The real struggle begins. Good night, everyone. <laughs>